guys, welcome to The Gun Shop with me, John, and today we've got a video on snap caps for you. Uh, so, in front of us we have three different types of snap cap. We have the plastic ones, probably best avoided, this, or at least if you are going to use them, make sure you ch change them very often. The plastic can get brittle over time and you end up with the rim snapping off and then stuck about down here in the chamber. Uh, so if you do use plastic ones, just be careful. However, they're really cool in semi-automatics because at least you can like do loading and practice drills. And they're full length. Uh, we have chrome ones, these are more presentation than anything, uh, although they work very well, I suppose. And these, these are probably the most popular ones, these are just short alloy caps by Parker Hale. They do a brass equivalent, but they work exactly the same. And this is the video we'll be doing you on today, is using these ones. So, to use them, you get them, put one in each barrel, close the gun up, safety off, pull the trigger, re-engage, and an inertia one, if you've got a mechanical trigger, just pull the trigger twice, just fire off both barrels. And now that gun is ready for storage. That is what snap caps are for. You see a lot of people do it and then do it, uh, stick them in and don't fire them. What's, that seems fairly pointless to me. Uh, they did do a type of snap cap back in the day that had sort of a, a just a brass piece with a wool mop on the end and that works very well uh, because you can keep your barrel well oiled. But you know, that's not the purpose of these guns, especially with the modern guns with chrome line barrels. So what do snap caps do? <coughs> At uh, snap caps, when you pull the trigger, relieve the pressure on your mainsprings. Uh, these little bad boys here. Are they vital? Well, that depends very much on what I'm about to tell you. So if you come in close, I'll give you a vague explanation of how these work. We'll take one apart, I'll describe the difference of the different springs they're used for, and try and make some sense of them. Let's start by taking this little bad boy apart to sort of show what it does. So, what happens is you take this little screw out of the back of the main body, you just give it a little tap, and you end up with your actual brass striker piece and a spring, a tiny little spring. Uh, so, what happens, we put those back in is you have adjustable tension on the back of most of these things, so it's always worth making sure they're tight. If they're too loose, they won't actually do a job. And if they're too tight, all you're going to do is damage the brass. So you want to do it all the way up, generally speaking, and just undo it a quarter turn until you can literally push it like that. Because the whole point of this is when these mainsprings here push these strikers forward, and bear in mind you can dry fire your gun at any time, so this is why you need these. When these are actually driven forward, they hit that centre, they push it in, but actually it removes some of the it removes all of the shock that's going to happen around the collar and everything. So it leaves, it. it's kind of like a neutral, it's, it's slowing your pin down, it's slowing your hammer down at the end. And that's what that's all about, it's probably not quite enough. Yet. Perfect. And that is the point in the snap caps, it's so that you don't damage your firing pins whilst being able to remove the pressure on your mainsprings. The big question, are they necessary? And this is why I've got a couple of bits on the table here. I'd rather use one than not. That's, that's my first thing I'm gonna say. I'd rather use one than not. However, if I had the choice, and we're talking about the whole purpose of this is to maintain mainspring life, if your gun runs on this, which is a V-spring, I'd use snap caps every single time, absolutely religiously, because a V-spring, when compressed, will lose life and last less long. More importantly, they're generally more expensive to produce, fit, and manufacture. So, that being the case, this little spring here, a coil spring, cheap to manufacture, cheap to fit, all the same, very easy to reproduce in the same power, the same size for every gun, or for every gun they're designed for, you know. Generally, a main spring is going to cost you what? Depending on the unit, a Bretta unit is quite expensive, but the actual spring itself, it's going to be, what, 10, 15 pounds? A V-spring can be anywhere up of 200 pounds. So, I would always use snap caps for one of these. I wouldn't necessarily use them for one of these. Um, I wouldn't call it utterly necessary because I'd be happy to change my mainsprings every couple of years anyway, which they'd probably last under compression. These pins, there's only two pins here. This one's out of a, a side, uh, box lock, the disc, disc set striker. And I believe this is out of a Lamba, maybe. 
possibly, or a Rizzini, doesn't really matter. Just to have a box of old, old pins I have lying around. Pin design can vary massively. Pin design can vary hugely. And so the pin design can actually prevent it from snapping. For example, I have never seen a Beretta with snapped strikers. However much you dry fire it, it's a very, very difficult thing to actually damage. So perhaps unnecessary in a Beretta. Brownings are a little bit more fragile, however, they very, very rarely break. They're much more likely to pit because they're quite soft browning ones. They don't make them too hard, so they're not too brittle. However, they are softer, so they end up, uh, the only reason you'll need to replace them is because the ends get pitted and worn. And those being your two popular ones that don't necessarily need snap caps. There you go. Uh, that's all I have to say, really, because they run on coil springs with a very intelligent pin design. Not necessary to use snap caps. However, why not use them for the sake of 10 quid? It seems silly not to prolong the life of your mainspring somewhere along the line. Anyway, guys, I hope that's been some sense. Take care. I'll see you later.